Hear the Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Matthew. Jesus said, Whoever welcomes you welcomes me, and whoever welcomes me welcomes the one who sent me. Whoever welcomes a prophet in the name of a prophet will receive a prophet's reward. And whoever welcomes a righteous person in the name of a righteous person will receive the reward of the righteous. And whoever gives even a cup of cold water to one of these little ones in the name of a disciple, truly I tell you, none of these will lose their reward. This is the Gospel of the Lord. May I speak in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. We were so fortunate last week to be able to share in the Arts Week, which was supported by so many people. There really was a wonderful variety of events for people to attend, but there was also a steady stream of people who came into the, to the door of the church having read the signs at the gate and those around the village. Some were really quite hesitant about coming over the threshold, but they made the step, encouraged by the smiling stewards who were on duty. They were amazed at what there was to see and to hear more about what was happening. I know people went away reflecting on the displays of artwork some of which had made a profound impact on them. Hopefully in the future, wherever they find themselves, they won't hesitate about going into church. Jesus, talking to his disciples, emphasises the importance of welcome, hospitality and inclusion. He was aware that people were listening when he spoke about God's message of hope for humanity and he knew that the disciples were made welcome in many places. Not always, of course, but generally that's what happened. And in the Middle East, hospitality is very important. It was in the time of Jesus and it still is today. I remember when we were on a holiday on the way to visit Petra and we were taken to visit a small group of local people who were sitting under a Bedouin tent. They immediately offered us sweet coffee and gave us a wonderful welcome, particularly to these strangers who just dropped in. But it was brilliant. Sadly, that's not always the way. These days, we hear more and more reports of discrimination, special inquiries being set up to explore some of the hostile environments people face. This week, cricket has been in the news, but that's just one instance of what people regularly seem to be facing. There are still very difficult stories being told by the Windrush generation. Those who came to find a happier place to live, to help with rebuilding communities, but found only discrimination. And there are many other instances. In the letter to the Hebrews, the writer talks about welcoming strangers who are angels. It's this spirit of hospitality which is at the heart of the gospel and yet seems to be lacking in so many places today. In Matthew's account, he makes it clear that whoever welcomes a prophet in the name of a prophet will receive a prophet's reward. We are told that sharing even a cup of cold water is an act of righteousness. And I suspect 
that in recent days that's really true where we've had such hot weather. A cup of cold water brings relief and will make the recipient feel recognised and encouraged. Jesus knows that God recognises the acts of kindness made by people. This is how communities are developed and how people reach out. It's thought that Matthew was reporting one of the conversations Jesus had with his disciples during his earthly ministry. But we also need to bear in mind that Matthew's Gospel was also written for Jews who were following Christianity in the years after Jesus' resurrection. It would have been very powerful for those who heard it and it gives us a, framework, a framework to continue to pass on the message. There's a message which is shared amongst the Hebridean community. I can't say it exactly, obviously, in the right uh, way, but I saw a stranger at Yesterin. I put food in the eating place, drink in the drinking place, music in the listening place, and in the sacred name of the triune, he blessed myself and my house, my cattle, my dear ones. And the lark said in her song, often, often, often goes the Christ in the stranger's guise. Very much echoing the passage from Hebrews. Jesus did have a welcome in many places, and that tradition has been passed through the generations, thankfully. And it's our responsibility to continue sharing that good news today, so that people can come to know God's message of love. At the end of Arts Week, a, long, a long-standing villager said to me, she'd never imagined the church being used for a jazz concert, but she'd come along and it was wonderful. So let's open our hearts as we opened our doors last week and welcome those who are seeking, those who are hesitant. Let's share with them the love God gives and the support he gives in our lives. Amen. Let us focus our bodies, minds, hearts and wills as we pray to the God of all creation. Holy God, you are the focus of our love and worship. You alone are the Lord who made us and rescued us. May we never return to the slavery of sin, but live in your freedom, serving you with joy in thankfulness and praise. We continue to give you thanks for the success of the Arts Week and for all who came to find joy and peace. May our hearts always be open to extend love and welcome to all who seek it, that through us others may find the joy of your saving grace. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Holy God, though the world may reject you, you never cease to love us and to believe in us. We pray for all areas of conflict, deceit, mismanagement and greed, and for all who are drawn into the chaos of evil. We pray for all world leaders and their governments. Help them to see that the strength of authority comes not through force and domination, but through cooperation and mutual respect. 
We pray for real communication, which listens to needs, appreciates difficulties, and acknowledges differences. Above all, Lord, we pray for your peace and that your will may be done. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Holy God, our daily lives provide such rich ground for acts of loving kindness, self-discipline and courage. Show us these opportunities, Lord, and strengthen us to use them. We pray for our families and friends, wherever in the world they may be. We pray for families who are struggling, for neighbourhoods and communities split apart by conflict or crushed by tragedy, for children for whom home is not a safe place, for all those in the grip of any addiction. Grant strength, Lord, to all who try in any way to help them. May they learn what true love looks like, that respect and dignity may grow, and all people turn to you and your salvation. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Holy God, we bring to you all who are suffering in any way today, those who are ill, those for whom life is a burden. And in a moment of quiet, we name to the Lord anyone who is on our hearts today. Touch them with your healing hand, Lord. Grant sympathy and skill to all who try to help them and let them know that you are always with them. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Holy God, we commend to your gracious keeping all who have died, especially those we remember with love and thanksgiving. May they rest forever in your love, joy and peace. Be with all who are mourning the loss of a loved one at this time, Lord, and grant them your comfort and your peace. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Merciful Father, accept these prayers. For the sake of your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. 